Alibaba has been the king of e-commerce for so many years now, reigning throughout China. In fact, in 2023, their yearly earnings increased by 23%, soaring to $135 billion. But then again, no business, no matter how successful, is immune to the inevitable landing of competitors. So subscribe to the channel and let's see if this rumor is true or not. Alibaba runs a whole family of shopping platforms, not just a website. It includes other sites like Taobao and Tmall. This includes Tmall Supermarket and Tmall Global, but it seems that others too would like a slice of the cake. These platforms' sales contribution to the whole online shopping China market of Alibaba has unfortunately dropped a bit lately. In 2015, the year Drivi was founded, and in the years that followed, Drivi and a few competitors controlled just 22% of the market as Alibaba. Moving fast forward to 2022, 44% of that percentage has slipped down, and the percentage of marketplace control by Alibaba has lessened. That is almost half. While one would be hard-pressed to say that Alibaba is no longer a critical player, denying that others are moving into its territory is hard. The difference is that now, Alibaba faces a bigger boss than the competition, the Chinese government. Lately, China has made its intent very clear about reining in the market mania exercise that fosters anti-competitive behavior in its tech industry. Unfortunately for Alibaba, they have just walked into a war. The government immediately swung into action when the coronavirus outbreak happened in China towards the end of January 2020. It was stringent with its major safeguards, which included social distancing and lockdowns, achievable to condition the spread of the virus. Think about businesses like restaurants, hotels, movie theaters, parks and shops whose products and services you are normally in physical contact with. Many of the businesses listed above had a noticeable drop in immediate traffic. But what really skyrocketed it all? at this very time, online services, such as e-commerce or online learning programs, began doing even better than ever before. Many restaurants have speedily adapted to the new normal and have started offering home delivery services from their restaurants to people's houses. They no longer require them to visit. Such a notion is the digital part, or online business, another greatly important part of our economy. Nevertheless, such businesses have made a big difference in these tough times. The good news is that they restore stability to a person and, at the same time, maintain safety because they do not require the involvement of other people in their usage. The Chinese technology giant is now in a tough time having been stopped by Chinese authorities from launching its first public sale of shares in public to face all sorts of problems. Imagine a tough economy combined with rising competition, and you will surely realize the pressure Ant Group is in right now. Its stock market value is driven low from a huge $846 billion to a smaller number in the ballpark of $358 billion. The trouble could spill over into the new year, with Alibaba and Ant Group at the storm's center. While coughing up record fines of $2.8 billion in September is probably Problematic, those are just pocket change for a company pulling down over a staggering $100 billion in annual revenues. Much more serious are the potential impacts on its future operations as a result of the way it was doing business, which need to be changed. This is just one way new technology has changed the Chinese economy. Above all, it means everything from the big online platforms to big data, artificial intelligence, AI, and cloud computing. They may all sound too complicated or even like big words, but in the simplest sense of the word, they are nothing but tools that really help us do things with no difficulty and at a faster pace through the internet. Alipay, an affiliate of Alibaba, is frontlining when prodded on the tip of most people's tongues. In the latter part of 2021, Alibaba was slapped with an $18 billion fine for defying anti-monopoly laws. The fine followed the company's claim that the pressure on merchants was insinuated to be either their platforms 
or nothing, making it hard for them to engage with competitors. Behavior of that sort could very well be unfair and damaging the spirit of healthy competition. Of course, it was bound to attract even more attention this time. In 2022, just days before launching, Alibaba's financial arm and group had to postpone a mammoth IPO. According to Chinese regulators, it came after they expressed concern over the lending practice and general widespread financial instability at the company. This sees Alibaba's stock plunge dramatically, and investors now see the Chinese company as filled with concerns over its fate. On the other hand, Alibaba continued with its optimism and made moves towards addressing the issues that the government had put before it, as well as promises to improve transparency and compliance laid out in regulations. They also plan to invest in new technologies to stay ahead of the competition. This twist in the tail is a warning to every business, let alone giants like Alibaba. Indeed, no one is insulated from change or government intervention. Most of the new challenges on the plate as time draws out concerning the Chinese e-commerce market are proving an interesting scenario. One gets to see how Alibaba finally manages all of it within test time to become an industry leader. In December, the renowned e-commerce giant finally made a radical shift in its operation mode. It opted to split its critical online shopping business into two independent parts that will serve customers at home and abroad. Suppose it is like a cake. They just cut it into two slices. One slice is targeted solely towards the home market in China, and the other is for customers worldwide. It's just setting up two shops, one for the home and the other for the rest of the world, which has different needs and wants. Why does Alibaba do this? After all, they believe that this will help them better understand and serve what people in China want from online shopping, increase their sales, let them take bigger steps ahead in online shopping, and deliver service worldwide through their critical online overseas digital business unit. That was one aspect of it, said Yanni Liao, a university professor researching the sector at the semi-official Marketing and Consulting Institute in Taipei. Then, she shared with Al Jazeera her perspectives on how this reshuffle spun off good transitions for Alibaba and its end customers. The company has changed its business to more service and consumer at home oriented courses and elsewhere. How nice of them to try to be their best and serve us the best in these changes. Everyone knows that Alibaba owns some of the most popular e-commerce sites globally, an achievement through Taobao and Tmall. It has been number one in online shopping. But, at some point, there was a marked change in the wind. If you look at 2015, I mean, according to the research agency at that time, eMarketer, they would have had an unprecedented percentage share of the e-commerce market in China, between 78% and 90%. Fast forward a mere 8 years to 2023, and the number tells a very different story. Their market share is expected to have tumbled to 51%. So, what prompted this change in behavior? The reason was not China's crackdown on big tech, as the question was already trending. But the answer most likely lies in the burning competition in e-commerce and today's changing shopping habits in China. In fact, it was not the game or past Alibaba shopping experience that young Chinese shoppers were searching for emphasis while competing on shopping experiences like live streaming. More than that, by that time, China's economic engine wasn't rising as high as it was in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Then, free spending by consumers gave a look at a booming economy. But all that is changing now. With the slowing economy, the economy takes things slow, and consumers' spending habits also get acclimatized to this slow pace. Days of reckless spending are coming down together with the slow economy. Reports and studies reveal that, despite very tough times and tight liquidity, Alibaba has still managed well among its various forms of cash flow. Although net income growth has shown a sharp dip for the 2023 financial year, the company has grown its net income by 4%, up to an overwhelming amount of $20.9 billion. That's quite different from the fiscal year before, when Alibaba saw its net income rise to an almost 68% gain, taking its net income to $20.2 billion. 
billion. At the time, the Alibaba Group considered itself as, in a way, very extraordinary and unique, growing quickly through a one-of-a-kind market environment developed to encourage consumer behaviors. With time, the added competition naturally seeks an equalizing trend for a larger slice of the other progressively rising consumer spending growth. Alibaba has repeatedly diversified its business setting in an attempt to remain competitive. In addition to its core business of e-commerce, Alibaba has heavily invested in cloud computing, digital media, and entertainment services. All these investments have borne fruit, with almost 40% of Alibaba's aggregate revenue now being generated from these non-core businesses. Alibaba has also remained rock-solid in customer experiences. It has invested heavily in technological upgrades and data analytics efforts, all with the aim of upping its own comfort level regarding being able to further understand consumer behavior and personalize their shopping experience. This has been reflected in an increase in the number of active users on Alibaba platforms, with 51 million new users coming in just the last year alone. A few years ago, Alibaba was hinting at a slowdown, just a notch, when the entire market at that point was not doing so well. Hence, it didn't raise that many eyebrows. A streak of new competition laid its foundations and shook things into perspective. They wanted to ensure people felt good when using their online shopping platforms. Notably, according to Daniel Zhang, CEO of the Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba, things have changed, at least somewhat, from the popular perception that Taobao and Tmall are at the center of Alibaba large events, which persisted until 2010 and for many years before that. He says now, the emphasis will be big on the list of things to give people a large number of options, but that hasn't stopped Alibaba from being threatened and losing at least a bit of ground on their main competitors. Perhaps Alibaba runners believe that the company's great future lies within three big things. People buying more stuff in China, going to other countries, and expanding using advanced technology. However, what seems to escape them is the very signs that has helped the rivals create an expanding username for themselves, keeping the customers engaged and happy by releasing various ebooks, copying, and what others are doing, and heaping money, not international wisdom, seems to be their game plan. To drive growth, Alibaba brainstormed every new method for getting more people to spend more, whether active content creation or celebrities with their own live events. Of course, that includes discounts. The company is also working on new platforms, like Taobao Deals and Tao Tsai Tsai, specifically to attract deal seekers. A few examples of their effective approaches include their Zhang Chao event based campaign, which supports a steady supply of entertaining information and other on use promotions that pop up occasionally. So, that was all about the unexpected decline of China's largest e commerce giant, Alibaba. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up.